Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. So in today's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice video guide, we're going to be continuing with our detailed warfare. And just like we said last episode, we are now going to be doing Sempo Temple Mount Congo. Now we did get to this area through the abandoned dungeon area in the last two videos. So if you don't know how to get there, go and check out the abandoned dungeon video. So uh, get that sugar behind the building. We're just going to come down here pick this item up you can you can get from you can get down here from the proper path by going around if you really want to right now this NPC Cortado so you're gonna ask him why he's crying and he's gonna tell us that he wants a white flower so at the moment we can't do anything we'll be talking a bit about him very soon I just want want to let you guys know that that is the other character that we can send back to the surgeon if you didn't want to send, uh, I forget his name, the guy that goes down, well, basically the guy we did send, which was the guy looking for the melody in the reservoir area. Uh, but because we sent him, we are not going to send Cortado there. However, we are going to send Cortado to Anayama, which is the merchant. I believe this is the only NPC that you can send to Anayama, so we're going to use him for that. He obviously does have his um, own side quest. Uh, we're going to be talking about the kite a bit later on this episode, hopefully near the end. But we're not going to be talking about that quite yet. Um, but yeah, Kotaro we will be sending back. So here we have the, um, I, I forget his name too. This is the guy that was uh, selling us stuff in the old grave area in Ashina Castle. The guy that sold us the umbrella shield tool. And he moves here if you buy everything off of him. And he will give us a bit of clue how to use the kite. But like I said, we will be uh, we'll be coming back and using the kite a bit later. Did we pick up? I, I kind of because I'm talking so much. I'm not sure if I picked up the items below the bridge. I think we did, but I just want to go and make sure. I don't think that was even that important, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, we did. Okay, my bad. I kind of got a bit carried away talking. I really wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I just want to make sure that we do pick all the items up. I did notice um, while editing yesterday's episode, or the, uh, not, no actually it wasn't yesterday's, it was the, not the Mibu Village, the other one, the, uh, the depth episode, I did notice that we, we didn't pick up an item that was beside the headless, we didn't kill the headless, but I did notice I only picked one item up, and then started running away, and there was actually two items beside him, but, you know, it's not a missable item or anything. Alright, so here we're going to find a new type of enemy, which is the Monk. You don't want to watch out for that, uh, that thrust attack. You can make you do that if you, if you want to. Let's come over here. It's probably not the best approach to do this. Obviously, the guy with the, uh, with the pole um, is a lot more resistant than the other one, so I kind of totally recommend taking out the other ones. So watch out. Like, none of them are joking. None of them are screwing around. Plus, they do have this buff, as you can see, the guy with the uh, red eyes. Why can't I move? Oh, thank you. I got stuck in a rock there or something. The guy with the red eyes is because he used a buff. Let's just take this out. You want to try and separate them. In fact, you can probably do a bit of a... A skill, uh, a, sorry, a, a stealth kill. To at least one or two of those guys standing over there. But, um, yeah, just take those out and get the items that they were guarding. Or the item he was guarding. There's also going to be an item on top of this roof that we can get by just jumping on so make sure you can get that in that bird's nest i'm going to continue up the hill sticking to the left first since there will be another two items are up this side though there will be items the other side as well but i prefer to just do it in order get these then there's going to be one over there to the right you can really run past all of these if you really don't want to kill him kill any of them like they're not like then you, you literally can get through the next building and plus because the um next building is like you jump in a hole chances are that you're not even gonna you know what well, chances are no they can't they physically can't follow you in so it's up to you if you want the skill points for killing these guys but let's uh, just stick to the right and there should be an item down here near no two items down here near the trees and if you do want to fight them Oh, three items. If you do want to find them, not the best idea to, to do what I just done, to just run in like mad, okay? And there's going to be another item or two up here near this tree, so make sure you don't... Make sure you don't miss those, or that one. 
So jump down, we should have all the items around this area. There should be there, maybe one, yeah, there's one just down here. Like these guys are pretty much just not going to do anything after this because you jump up here and uh, you're gone for good, really. They, they can't follow you up, so yeah, completely up to you if you want to fight all of them. I just don't want to make the guide ridiculously long and boring, so uh, there'll be things that there's kind of not really a point. So this white, the guy in white here, the guy defending this gourd seed, you can try and kill him, but he will actually be um, immortal. And you will be able to kill him once you... I don't really want to stick around, I just wanted that item. Because he is immortal, like you can't kill him right now. If you want to completely kill him, you will need the mortal blade that we will actually be getting at the end of this episode. So, you know, it's best to not just hang around there. Make sure you get the seed though, incredibly important. So this woman is the same NPC that told us about all the other areas and she's telling us that there's something across there. Um, oh god, okay mate, calm down, <laughs> what the hell? Wait, what did he just throw at me? I don't know what he just threw at me. Uh, he's not telling us to go down there, he's telling us to, she's telling us to go all the way across there. But we'll be doing that with the kite a bit later on. So this area here, this, though we're not going to go up this, um, completely be able to jump across yet, we will be able to climb the tree. And get this, and you can see the kite is still all the way down there, that's where we was before. And that would go all the way up there in front of us and it would allow us to jump across there. But we'll be doing that this episode just a bit later on, okay? Uh, apart from that, the only items missing around here, there's going to be one over there and one on that bridge in the dead end. So we're going to go... Oh, never mind. Uh, just watch out for the flame. Uh, it will actually burn through uh, the, the... All the plants here. It's, it actually does quite a cool effect. Basically, just don't stand in the plants if you don't want to get burnt. Now, these guys, I really don't know how to fight these guys, to be honest. There's so few of them in the game that I don't really remember much about them. But they they are incredibly annoying. I really don't know if that's a stab, a poke, or God knows what that is. The best thing is just try and parry everything, really. That's all I can say. Just <laughs> You can knock them over, as you can see, if, if they are in midair, like that. Oh, we didn't hit them properly, I don't think. But if they are in midair and you hit them, they will actually fall to the ground completely. So as you can see, the the um the special attack they've got is a thrust attack, so you want to try and Mickey that. But these guys are just hyper like aggressive, like they will not stop ever. And you know, as most um hyper aggressive enemies, it is best to just play hyper defensive against them and try and parry everything possible. Because that, that will get their um, posture up pretty fast. I'm not really sure what's going on with the camera. That wasn't great, mate. God damn, he misses more than I do. Like, come on, mate. It's, it's almost like he's missing on purpose. <laughs> he knows that he's going to get staggered if we parry him, so it's just missing. Anyway, take that. Get the item over here. Now the way forwards you want to stick to the left, but like I said, there are some items up here. It's quite hard to sneak up on these guys. You probably could get away with sneaking up on these guys if you had the uh, sugar. Which we do have, we just didn't use it. Oh, it's so like, it's like, I don't get really get the point why they would jump over you so much. These guys just have a really weird moveset, like I said. It's like they... I'm not really sure why they jump over you. It's kind of probably to get behind you, but like because they they don't really attack immediately, so it just seems a bit pointless if you ask me. But whatever. Right, so uh, there's going to be an item down there. We'll probably get a sneak attack on this guy. There's going to be a guy all the way up there, which we don't really even have to kill, because after picking this up, all we want to do is uh, grapple onto that. So just uh, no, mind. I was going to say just jump, but I guess we jump too close to the edge, because uh, some grapple points are a bit weird. If you, if you get too close, like too underneath them, they won't allow it. Well, I could be actually, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think I'm screwing it up. I think we're actually gonna do it from the top platform. It may be possible from the bottom one, but I'm completely forgetting that I think we do actually have to do it from the top and not from where the item was. Cause uh, we're just too, yeah, that's it. We're just too close. 
to the bottom of it. Like as soon as you get underneath one, it just won't work. Don't worry about it. We're now at our next idle, so we're okay. We're okay for now. Okay. So from here, and before we head up, what we're actually going to do is we're gonna we're gonna go down here. Pick this. Nope, that always happens every time. There we go. Uh, here we're actually going to have a shop. Now there's kind of been two interesting things that we can buy from this uh, guy. One of those things is a persimmon. We're going to buy one of those. We'll talk about why a bit later for the secret ending. And the other thing isn't really that important, but I just wanted to show you something. I mean, so enough things to get a hold of it, that is. There we go. Do we have enough now? We need 1,600. Oh, right, we got, we got, no, we don't want that. Use two, two of these. Yeah, we've got plenty, Jesus. Uh, we want the five colored rice, just to show you that this is like prism stones. <laughs> I know a lot of people are wondering and asking if, if, if there's any items that's like prism stones, and that would be the five colored rice. And at the moment, we've only got one use, but if we, if we rest at an, M, an idol, I don't know why I'm nearly calling it an ember. If we rest at an idol, we're going to have five uses of colored rice. So, you know, if for those who do really like prism stones, that's what it looks like on Sekido. Uh, I believe it's always the same color, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, that's kind of cool. I've never really used this myself. That's kind of cool, actually. But, you know, j just a cool little thing for the people that were wondering about, about or the few, very few people, I guess, that were wondering about uh, prism stones since it has been in a lot of the games, or Dark Souls from software games. Uh, let's start by going all the way down to the bottom. Just put those away for now. <laughs> Pick this up. Jump across here. There's going to be a load of these rat guys around here, so just watch out. They can be quite annoying if you're that close to the edge. So yeah, uh, you can just ignore the rest of them though, because I don't think there's any more items around here. You can kill them if you want. However, this guy just here, you want to be be very careful, you want to watch out for his attack. You could just jump over him, but you know, there's a chance I hope um, throw a kunai or whatever he throws into your back when you're the other side, so just watch out. From here, we're actually going to go around and we're going to do a bit of a leap of faith. Make sure you like go towards the left when you jump, just so you can get a hold of it, because if you, if you do the grapple too far to your right, you'll miss these ledges and you kind of just, you'll be too far left, basically. So just kind of jump away from the ledge at the start a bit. Get that. Oh god, uh, I may have screwed that one up. I don't know why. Like sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, there's going to be a grapple point there, and uh, I'm not actually sure where the grapple point is. Where is the grapple point? Is there not a grapple point? Oh yeah, there is. I knew there was a grapple point. I don't know why we couldn't see that before. Game always freezes there for a second. The FPS just always drops there. I don't, I don't know, I knew there was a grapple point, I just don't know why it didn't really pull I guess, I, I guess I just did it too fast. Here, watch out for the lizards from above. I'm just going to jump up. So, this is a white pinwheel. Remember who was looking for a white flower? Well, it turns out it wasn't actually a flower. It's the white pinwheel that he was looking for. But we're not actually going to give him the white one. We're going to be finding another one that we'll be talking about soon. So uh, just hold on to that. Don't don't go and give it to him until I explain something, because you do actually have another option. So this this place just here is actually going to be the other side of the headless. Remember the headless that we found or we've seen all the way at the start of the game in the outskirts area, this is actually going to be the other side of that. And what do we have the other side of that? Well, we have the demon bell. So if we ring this bell, it will actually make the game harder, especially on the bosses. So you can actually get to this area from the pretty much the start of the game. Because if we uh, just run past the headless, you will actually come to this area just here. I just want to show it because there's not actually any items or anything this way. I just want to show you guys where you would end up if uh, if you did uh, either kill the headless, which is pretty impossible at the start, or uh, jump past the headless. So the headless is just there. 
I'm, I'm just gonna check. I don't think we can kill him yet, but I'm not sure if it's worth the risk. And we're not risking much, but I'm not even sure how much divine confetti we have. We have five, I guess that's not too bad. And pacify an agent. So you will need to, we'll get one shot, okay? So use the divine confetti first and then the pacify an agent since the divine confetti does last longer. And you just want to basically spam him. Try and parry every now and then, but it's just, it's just an annoying boss. And I think this is more luck than not luck. It just grabbed us. And that's kind of screwed us a bit. Remember you can jump, even if you are insanely slowed down, you can jump. You do want to try and parry, but, you know, it's just, it's a bit like sometimes it's incredibly aggressive, other times you won't do anything, other times you, you can, like one, like the first time I remember the, our tutorial, uh, we let, uh, that happened because we let our uh, pacifying agent run out. I think we can do it, but it, it's going to be tough, like very tough. I'm not sure if it's really worth wasting all our items at the moment. It just depends really how aggressive he is. So like if you get an attempt where he's not that aggressive at all and you don't really have to parry at all, then it's not too bad. He's got one of his health bars down there. But I, I do recommend just waiting as long as possible for late game for this. Just use another pacifying agent because if not... Like the pacifying agent really doesn't um, last all that long, let's just say. Uh, like this boss is like proper rage material. Let's just, let me just tell you that. It really there's so much things that can go right and so much things that can go wrong, and it's just like because you can't move, it's just incredibly annoying. You know what I mean? It's not like you can even dodge or anything. Like the only way you can dodge is by jumping. And as soon like because you gotta be really really um, looking out for that pass pacifying agent. As soon as that runs out, if he hits you a few times, we did get him though. Luckily, thank you. But that, that was really tough. Like, he was really aggressive then, though. It's, sometimes he, he isn't aggressive. Anyway, we will... Every time we get a headless, we get a special ability. Uh, just quickly, uh, that grapple point is back up to the... To the cave in um, the outskirts area that we checked out on the outskirts episode. So, that kind of joins up to this place. Now, you can run past him at the start if you want to get to the bell for a challenge run. Now, the spirit falls are actually items that we can equip to our quick select. And they are items that are going to use emblems up, but they're going to give us buffs. And those buffs are the same as the sugars. So we got the Echoes one, which is the same as the Echo Sugar, that gives us a bit more attack power. And, you know, they're actually really nice. Uh, specifically, like, ones like that one and the one... And the one that will give us, like, the invisibility thing. They're all really good. So there are a total of five headless, and that's going to be the first one. Like I said, I'll try and go back and kill all of them. We have seen that one, and we've also seen the one in the hidden forest area at the moment. I don't think we've seen any other one. Right, so now we have done that. We want to actually come back here, and this time we're going to take the other path after the after this little rat guy. I mean, like you know, you just jump over him, like I said, but you probably get hit in the back by a kunai or two when you jump up here. But now you've cleared the bottom area, there's no point of going back down there, so we're just going to come up here. And you see the bell's actually just there, and this is uh, this is above it. Uh, you can also go to where we picked up the white flower by jumping down there, but you would miss that, uh, the first item, which is the um, purse. If you want all that, make sure you go down the bottom part. Now here we're actually going to find the red and white pinwheel. So remember that... Uh, Cartado wanted the white one. Now we're actually going to have a choice of which one to give him, and we'll be explaining that at the end of this episode, which to do. Right, so this guy, this is a bit of a special uh, mini boss. This guy cannot actually be killed by damage. This guy can only be knocked off, okay? So make sure that when you get his uh, posture all the way to the top, he is close to a edge. Don't get, don't get his posture up. Um, if he's like in the middle of the place because you won't be able to kill him and you have to get most of his posture up, bar up again. Not completely, but I mean the more you screw it up and the more you get his posture bar up and then don't kill him, the higher his posture bar will start. I'm going to try and push him a bit that way, let's just say. Because uh, I'm not sure, if, I kind of don't want to kill him right now because I don't think he's close enough. He would be now maybe? There we go. Can we turn around? There we go. He should be dead. 
Yeah, there we go. That's just about as very close. He was almost about to hang on there. So kill him. Uh, you do. You do have to kill him to advance. There's no way to get around him. Uh, but obviously, it's worth it. It's quite an easy mini boss, and plus, you will get a prayer bead and the breath of uh, nature, which will recover a bit of posture every time you do a death blow. So definitely worth it anyway. It's going to be an idol here. This area is a pretty big area, but we are we are getting through it. Right, now this is the main reason I actually went down to Miru Village before coming here because like I said, I think I recommend coming here before doing the depth because this area is technically a lot easier, or at least a bit easier. But the reason I did the Miru Village before this area, let's kill that carp, I think there's two, you yeah. It's because remember you got the dive ability from Miru Village, I didn't want to keep coming backwards and forwards. But with the dive ability you want to dive into here and you want to get this item just here, this is very important. If you want the secret ending, or the purification, not the purification, the return ending, which is like the true ending. So if um, if you haven't talked or spoke to Genichiro, or not Genichiro, if you haven't fought Genichiro and then talked to Kudo, Ishin, and Emma at the top of Ashina Castle, this won't actually be here, and you can get that by going all the way to the end of this level. But if if you have done all that, which we obviously have, it will be at the bottom of this lake. So it's like actually two ways of getting that. I would like to continue diving down to get this, which is a prayer bead. So incredibly cool items are down in this lake. Very important items. Did we get the um? Did we get the item on top of that roof? I think we did, didn't we? Just want to make sure. Yeah, we did. Okay. Right, so uh, there's going to be an item dropping down here. A few dogs, or a dog. Not a few dogs. Uh, before heading towards the next temple area, we are going to take a bit of a detour down here to the right, because this will take us to the other side of the of the bridge. Watch out for the monkeys. They're like dogs. Incredibly annoying sometimes, but you, you can insta-kill them pretty much. This is going to be the other side of the broken bridge. Remember back where the guys with the somersaults and all that. So sure, we'll get the back stuff on this guy if you're passing off. Watch out for the monkeys. The monkeys are more of like a distraction thing. I mean, it's not the first time we fought mon monkeys. Now we think about it, they was around the the mini boss in the uh, hidden wood forest place. We got another person in there if you don't buy it. And yeah, like I said, this is the other side of the broken bridge just before we grappled up. So yeah. Just, just so everything makes sense. You can grapple up here. There's, there's no items up here, but sometimes, yeah, there's enemies. But um, yeah, that's that's all we wanted from down there. So let's just uh, quickly head back up and continue. Now, I don't want to kill every single little monkey and stupid enemy because it's just going to make it ridiculous. You know, we'll kill all these guys though. Watch out for the guys with like the uh, covered faces because they will start throwing some weird like. I don't know really what to call them, they're like flying little grenades. They, they are like incredibly slow and they're, they don't really, they're actually really easy to dodge of course, but they can be a nine if, if they catch you off guard like that. See that's, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I think, it was, I think I did mention at the start of this guide somewhere. You can't just drop off of little ledges like that and it, it kind of like this, that's what happened to me and I just blew up. But like if this was dark so you just be able to walk off like that, but if you're like attacking, it won't let you and it can be incredibly annoying. Like, really annoying. I mean, obviously, when you're attacking and you're, like, right next to a cliff, which would kill you, it's helpful, but when you're next to some little shit like that, it's kind of really annoying. Make sure you pick that up from there. I think there's probably one more item dropping down, I think. There's, like, a little platform down here, if I'm not mistaken, with some items on it. Could be wrong. Nope, there it is. Check the monkey. You can continue dropping down, you can also drop down and get to the uh, bridge, or the other side of the bridge area from here if you want, that was that platform we was on uh, before from down there. And then you can uh, get down there from there. But uh, that's it for that area. Now we can't just walk straight into the temple, we could just grapple onto the roof, but before that we're gonna... Well, we're not actually gonna grapple onto that roof because we're gonna pick this item up and then we're actually gonna go around to the right hand side of the temple because there's actually going to be a mini boss. You can skip it if you'd like, like I said, just grab onto the roof above us and we're done, but we're actually gonna go the other way around. I'm gonna jump down here and then down into the this rooftop. 
And as you can see, there's going to be a little mini boss there. You can get a uh, nice little death throw on him. Though you do sacrifice staying up top and killing some of these little guys, which can be very annoying, these guys. Uh, especially when you are fighting this mini boss, because this mini boss, you want to be facing him. You do not want to be doing anything else. These mini bosses are very easy to kill. Just parry, parry all the time, and they'll actually like almost kill your, themselves. It's like the elites in the uh, Sheena Castle. They'll just jump and then just parry everything else. And uh, by spamming the parry button or the deflect button, they'll pretty much finish themselves. So that's a nice easy prayer bead right there. These guys are always nice. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Pick up the two or three items down here. I'm not sure if it's two or three, just two. And you want to grab onto this slightly bigger kind of piece of wood, and this will actually take you to the exit. I remember the first time in there I got stuck in there for ages, like, how the hell do I get out of this building? But you just need to grab off there. So, uh, where this pack of wolves are, you can just scare them all if you want by doing that. And uh, you can, you know, you can kill all of them if you want. They're all going to be one shot away from dying. Or you can even death blow them after a firecracker, it's completely up to you. But I just really wanted the item more than anything. Kill these guys. I hear one locks on to something like that. Did the other guy not die? Uh, interesting. Dead now. So if we if we go up here, not up, is this one where we want to be? No, never mind. Never mind. I thought there was an item there, but there wasn't. Right, so this is going to be the temple that we could have grappled up onto um, from before. That we would have actually grappled up onto that roof. I'm just going to show you guys. So this, like, over here was where we were before. And we could have grappled up onto that hook, or hook um, roof. But instead we went around the right and then blah, blah, blah. So this time we are going to be in here. Watch out for these guys. These guys can be very annoying. Watch out for their grab attack. When they, when the carrot, the red carrot comes up, it's always the carrot. Um, it's pretty much always guaranteed to be the... Uh, grab attack so just watch out as soon as you see it just move it's really the only way to dodge it this guy's gonna be very annoying sometimes. and very resistant specifically that's really the reason they're annoying is because of how resistant they are but just uh if you if it's one versus one just keep on going so the the same type of any but the ones that throw stuff are incredibly weak you can kill them two or three uh slashes but these guys you just wanna, you know, whatever. If it's 1v1, you just wanna spam the button, really. In here, we're gonna find another one of these immortal guys, so I recommend just leaving him be, leaving them be, because, like I said, they are immortal until you get the mortal blade, which is something we're gonna be getting at the end of this episode. So if you really, really wanna come back and kill them, it's completely up to you. But it's not really much point. As long as you can get the items. Right, from here we're going to take this path, um, let's get the axe out, these guys are incredibly easy to kill with the axe, same type of grab attack as the other ones, one axe to the, to the head, uh, or the umbrella thingy, and they're dead, so remember we were just here, that's where we killed the three monks, it's going to be a monk here, and a giant with a shield, you want to watch out for him, um, you, there is one more item down there, but we're just going to get rid of these first. You can do a stealth attack on this guy. I think, he, yeah, he's only going to have one health bar. Obviously, he's not a mini boss or anything. Uh, also, if the if the giant with the shield does happen to see you, just uh, use the axe and uh, like when you break his shield, which you should break in one or two axe shots, it will stagger him like for quite a while. So, yeah. Basically anything you see with a shield, just use the axe. It'll be incredibly easy. Is that an item down there? Oh, okay, no, it's just what the uh, monks left from before. Those are the guys we killed before. We're actually getting a lot of skill points here that we haven't used. I guess we'll use them next time we find an idol. Kill him. Jump up on the roof. You can come directly from the temple roof, the last temple roof, all the way up here. You can just grab onto that tree and jump up. If you don't want to do the giant area. Let's kill these guys. Whoop. And whoop. Right, now we are at the main temple. 
Now there are going to be a few of these annoying enemies, and even worse, because they got more weapons. Now if you're really low on health, what I recommend is just opening these doors, because you're going to get iframes while you're doing it, so they can't kill you. And we're going to find our final idol here, so just quickly run in and rest there. Like I said, uh, if you're low on um, healing items, those guys can be a living nightmare. And there's no items out there either, so, you know, it's not really a point. Uh, watch out for the immortal guys in this building, but we do kind of want to try and get the items. Just ignore them, because you're not going to be able to kill them yet. Is there items around here? I don't think so, but there is items around here. And there's going to be an item just here. And if we go up here, we should be able to jump on the main statue to get this item. It's dragon blood, that's used to uh, heal dragon rock. So if we want to fight the boss, we're actually going to inspect this. And like I said before, you can only do that if you have beat Genichiro and spoke to Kudo, Emma and Ishin at the top of Ashina Castle. If you haven't done that, there'll be a monk there that will actually give you the uh, scroll or whatever it was to do the secret ending that we found in the in the bottom of that lake. So uh, if you haven't done that, you won't be able to fight the boss, but you will be able to get the scroll from the monks out there until you do finally do that. Uh, before heading into that, we are going to come down here though. And we're going to just get a kind of important item, I guess, from here. You can jump down, um, but the, technically the real way is to go... Let's sit there. There it is. You want to come down here. This is technically the real way because if you do jump down, you will take a bit of damage. So uh, if you really don't want to take damage, you want to do it the real way. You can do that. Like I said, you're not going to miss anything. There's going to be an enemy there, and this is the way forward. Pick this up. We will be coming back to this area though if we do do the uh, return ending or the secret true ending, which we'll try and do. But we're gonna, for now we're just going to go through the cave, we're not going to find much. But at the end here, in this temple, we will actually be able to get another skill tree for our skills. We do have 10 skill points, so, you know, the more the better, I guess. Simple esoteric text. Pick this up. And now we just want to try and grapple all the way back across to the temple which was in before. This is the temple that we were just in with the final idol. So you get a shortcut back. And we're going to enter the same door through where we exited. Just so you guys know exactly where we are. And that's really it. Uh, let's go and find the boss. So the boss is a bit of a trick. Well, it's a trick boss. Not a bit of a trick boss. It's literally a trick boss. So let's go and fight that. And basically what this boss is, is they are going to be four monkeys. And they're all going to be kind of escaping us with their own unique methods so the first one's always going to be right behind you just here so that, one, that guy's easy to take out they die in like one or two shots and that'll take like a, a quarter of the boss's health bar um firecrackers are really good against these i'm not even sure like, i've never caught him that quick but um anyway uh the next one you want to wait here and you want to use the bell this will stagger him, and you'll be able to just go up there and kill him. So make sure you do that. Easy done. That's two out of four. Now, for the other ones... Oh, God. Are you serious? <laughs> Don't worry if you do fall off. You, like, unless you do completely die, you just respawn at the, at the start. That, that actually may have screwed a few things up. We can see the red one's just there. The red one's not the hardest one to... I mean, sometimes you'll have, like, massive trouble with these, and sometimes it'll be, like, incredibly easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's a bit weird. Like, there, we could have actually got him there. Is he gonna keep... God damn it. Mate, 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 calm down. <laughs> sometimes he would just, like, run around like this. Other times he'll... Yeah, there we go. We could have killed him there, but I screwed up pretty badly, admittedly. The red one's really random. And the red one's probably the hardest one. Mainly because it comes down to luck. If you would have gotten like another shot on him just there where we was before, yeah, we, whoa, 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 whoa. He does normally end up coming back to this tree though. Uh, if if we take, if it seems like we're going to take forever, let's just go and get the other one. 
So for the other one, you're going to come to, I'm kind of a bit lost at the moment, but one of these towers, it's not this one. I think it actually is the one all the way over there to the left, if I'm not mistaken. I think the red one's around here as well. I can see his footsteps. I'm not actually sure. Uh, just watch out. Yeah, the red one's just there. Just watch out for the um, the ghost monkeys. The the more you the more you kill, the more ghost monkeys will come. So we'll kill two. The other one is normally around here. But what we're gonna do is open this. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is meant to attract him to this area. I could be, I could be completely wrong about this, but it does seem to get him to come to this area. But it's just this boss is a bit of a weird one. It's like if you do it first go, like when it's meant to, like when I, I just screwed up on the red one. It seems really easy, but like as soon as you kind of let them go for a bit, it, it can get kind of really out, like like this. It's just random. Like this time he didn't even see me coming, so right, he's dead. Is is a bit random, I'd say. This boss is. And I can understand why people have trouble, but basically the first one's always going to be behind you. The second one's always going to be at the bell, so just ring the bell. If he does escape from the bell, he will actually go to the top of that building inside. There's actually a grapple point. The red one's always just running around, and the blue one normally, normally he's at the bottom of one of these. And I'm not sure if it's always the same one or not, but the blue one, if you keep running around and looking down from the top, from the roofs, down to these towers, you should eventually come across him. Watch how it takes us for ages now. I can't find him at the moment. Sometimes you will see him jumping across the roofs as well, but normally he ends up going into one of those. But I never remember if it's always the same one or not. Hmm. Maybe if we jump down and try and look for him. Also, the monk, the monk just there behind us, that guy who actually gives us a bit of clues as well. Alright, so this is the one that we opened, right? There's only one that you can open. I'm not sure if I have to. Sometimes, it, like, what I do find uh, easy to do is just reset. Like, if, if, you're, um, if you just can't find one of them, just, like, don't reset completely, but just, like, fall off and get back to the start, and sometimes that helps. I'm sure there's like a better method for this. I'm sure there's like a, a method that cannot fail around the internet. I'm sure I just haven't really, I haven't really thought much of this boss ever because normally it happens quite quick. The only one that does sometimes take a while normally is actually the red one, but we actually killed him quite fast. And uh, now we're here. If the guy from the bell escapes, oh yeah, the blue one's here. Huh, interesting. Interesting. I thought it was only the green one that came up here, but I never, I've never i never seen the blue one there. Never seen the blue one there. I've only ever seen the green one there when it escapes from the bell. But, oh well, okay. I guess that sorted our stuff out. So now all four of them are dead. One way or another. It's going to teleport us to another new area, which is kind of going to be a bit of a dead end. But we're going to find an, a very uh, important NPC and a very important... Uh, weapon which is going to be the mortal blade which isn't really a weapon I mean you can use it with certain skills uh, let's just uh, quickly use the memory and uh, we have now got another ninjutsu which is puppeteer we're going to be using that in a second for something so we want to talk to the divine child and then accept and this will trigger a little cutscene of us getting the mortal blade I'm just going to skip all of this obviously now, remember remember the uh, chapter we got from the lake? That is actually for this character. I'm not sure if we're going to have to rest before giving it to her or not. But basically, um, I think we are going to have to rest because uh, we're just getting rice at the moment. Let's go and rest. Let's go and rest. Unless I did give it to her just then, but I didn't even know it was because I was skipping them through the uh, dialogue so quickly. Maybe we did give it to her, but basically you want to try, like once you've got that, give hold, oh there we go, give it to her. And this is the first step in 
doing the secret ending or the return ending okay so we will continue with that uh, what what you do want to do basically for the next step okay well you know let's let's just get some of it out of the way I know we could do, if doing all this in one episode can be annoying so she gave us rice we're gonna eat the rice what we're gonna do is we're gonna travel to I don't know, where, wherever far away I guess and then we're gonna come back and hopefully she will give us more rice and what we're gonna try and do is eat rice travel come back talk and hopefully she'll give us more rice we're gonna do that a few times and um eventually hopefully um she will end up being sick or getting ill now there's a lot of bugs and i wouldn't say they're bugs but there's a lot of like confusion around um when you have to do this and before what point I think the latest you shouldn't like you shouldn't leave it any later than the divine dragon boss bell but you can start it like right now if you really want yeah see she, she'll give us rice again i'm not sure if it matters how far away you travel or not i really don't know i'm not sure if you can travel to a closer place and uh, then travel back but i just always go to the water mill it seems like somewhere it always works so uh, just eat the rice and uh, we're going to do it again. We're going to at least get to the next uh, point of this uh, main quest. Uh, the next point is actually she's going to get ill and she's actually going to ask for a persimmon to uh, get better or get well. And remember we actually brought one of those from the merchant in Semple Temple in the mountain so we can give it to her. And uh, we did actually find another one from... Uh, from near the bridge, near the broken bridge, and also there is. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go over it right now. Now we're doing this. Just have something to talk about. So remember, Kotaro, the NPC that we found at the start of this place. If we give him the white pinwheel, that is to continue his personal main quest. And basically, his quest consists of giving him the white pinwheel. Then he's gonna ask you to send him send him away and to do that you're going to be able to come back once you have the uh i can't remember what it's called but the you know the fan ob abduction i think it is the tool and you're going to use that on kotaro and that's going to send him to the place where we just fought that boss for we just fought the monkey boss kotaro will get sent there once we have used the fan abduction on him uh by the way, to get back there, you just want to go through the light just there. That will take you back to that area. There's no items or anything, but, you know. And once you talk to Kotaro there, that will be the end of his quest. However, if you do that, he will give you a unique persimmon where when um, the divine child gets ill, if you give her that persimmon, she will have some unique dialogue. So you don't need that specific persimmon and it works with any persimmon like the ones we've gotten and like actually by like the ones we're going to use. But if you do do Kotaro's quest all the way until the end, which is really short and easy. Like I said, all you need is the abduction fan thing tool to send him away to there, go there, talk to him and that's done. You will just get unique dialogue from the divine child. But like because that's all you get for doing Kotaro's quest. Not not because that's all you get, because any quest on this game, you don't get anything much better, even from the surgeons or anything like that. But that's the reason we're going to be using Kotaro for Anayama's side quest, the merchant. Anyway, uh, now we've um, asked for rice quite a few times, free I think. She is ill, and she is going to ask us to now go and uh, give her a persimmon. So we do have a persimmon, so we're going to give that to her. And uh, she's going to give us rice, and she's also going to give us rice for Kudo. And obviously we have to take that to uh, Kudo himself. Um, I guess we've got time. Like, like this video is probably going to be quite long, but we may as well do it because I'm sure that if we don't do it now, we're going to forget about it. So let's go to Kudo's room, which is uh, the last time we've seen Kudo uh, was at the top of um, Ashina Castle. And obviously it depends what part of the game you're on. He'll be there in a different area. 
So at the moment he is there, so let's go and speak to him. As you can see, you can start this, uh, the procedures to the, you can actually do most of the things for the secret return ending at this point in the game. There will be one or two things that we will have to wait a tiny bit later for, but you can get most of it done at this point of the game. So uh, once we've got the rice for Kudo, let's go back and give it to him. He should be in the library. Uh, you can give him normal rice as well, I believe. Or maybe not. Maybe you can't give him normal rice. I'm not actually sure. I think you can give him normal rice as well. But anyway, uh, once he's got that, I think you just have to rest. So we're just going to rest here. And now he should give us... He should have moved, actually, yeah. And he will give us some sweet rice balls. Now, um, you don't have to eat it in front of him. It will just get a bit of extra dialogue if you do eat it in front of him. Right, but you do have to eat them, okay? So just, you know, you may as well do it now. So go ahead and do that. Uh, he'll talk to you and you say it's very good, blah, blah, blah. And that is it. Now we are going to go back to Simple Temple, the Inner Sanctum, where the Divine Child was. And if everything works fine, she should not be there at the moment okay if she is there talk to her and rest and hopefully that will send her away but basically what we want now is for her not to be there and if we can't get her to go away um it's not always easy to fix to be honest so let's talk to her tell her that we uh gave her gave him the rice i think she's meant to be here actually she'll just disappear next time you rest maybe travel maybe you have to travel i'm not sure Rest to the if she goes away. Yeah, okay, she's, so she's gone away now. So where she has gone is into the uh, Hall of Illusions where we just fought the monkey boss. So let's go over there and follow her in. Uh, once we talk to her in here, she will come back to her normal area. So uh, Kotaro, by the way, will be sitting around about here if you do do his quest to the end and you want that person. But like I said, we're not going to be doing Kotaro's quest. We're going to be sending Kotaro away. Right now, talk to her just here. And she is going to ask us to go and get the two um, snake persimmons or snake livers, if you will. Actually, no. First, she's going to actually ask us to go to the dark cave that we already went into before. So let's go and do that, actually. This is a bit longer than I remember it being, actually. There's, there's some things I just don't remember about it. But yeah, you're right. Uh, now we have to go back to that dark cave. Remember the one right next to the end of the uh, of the temple? We're going to have to go back there. And that's perfect, actually, because now we can show that this place will actually join up to the main part of the temple. But uh, we're just going to go and get this item that was behind the building first. Just there we go, pellets. And uh, this door is going to take us back to the main uh, hall. This actually took me ages to figure out. I never really bothered exploring this place. I always thought it was kind of just a tiny old place. And uh, because this door would only open from the other side, this, this door drove me insane and figure, trying to figure it out. It's like, where the hell is the other side of that door? And because I, it's like the last place I was expecting was that little area. But yeah, there you have it. So yeah, let's just quickly go back into that dark little cave. And this time we're going to find a, I, I believe the dead monk is actually there all the time, but he just won't have the item in front of him. So uh, the dead monk's going to be past the jump. Remember if you do jump down there. Oh, you didn't actually take damage. Normally you take damage. I'm not sure if it's because I dodged as soon as I landed. I'm not actually sure. Normally you take damage from, from falling there. Though. That's kind of weird and cool at the same time. Anyway, the monk should be just up here if I'm not mistaken. We should see an item. No, oh, we've missed it. There it is. I knew it was around there somewhere. Uh, the monk was there before, but the uh, the item wasn't last time we came through there. So we're going to get the holy chapter dragon's return, and that is obviously what we want to go and show the uh, the divine child. But yeah, the next thing she's going to ask us for is to go and find the two uh, snake persimmons, and uh, that's. Like once we do that, then it's just really talking to her and that's about it. 
So let's first go and give her that. I guess it's faster to just uh, travel there, if you ask me. Though even though it's just the other side of that door. Let's go and give her that, and then we'll save the rest. Well, I mean, we can't advance uh, anymore. We can't get the uh, snake persons quite yet. So now she should ask us for the two things. There we go. Okay, so now she's asked for that. Um, let's go and talk to Cartado at the start of the level. He was crying next to that tree. So remember, if you give him the white one, it is to follow his quest line. To follow his quest line, we are going to wait until we get the uh, the fan of abduction or whatever it's called, the tool that you get in the sunken valley. Then you're going to do use that on him, and you, he's just simply going to go to the Hall of Illusions where he fought the monkey boss, talk to him there, and you get a, speci a special person that you can get a bit of extra dialogue for the secret ending from the Divine Child. We're not going to do that, we're actually going to give him the um, red and white pinwheel and this is going to allow us to send him off to another NPC. So we're going to send him off to um, Anayama, which is the merchant that was looking for somebody to loot the battlefield in the outskirts to continue with his quest. And you can also send this guy off to the surgeon, but we already did that with the other NPC. Just because this is the only NPC I believe that you can... Uh, send to the merchant so that's it now next time you go and see Anayama uh, he should be with him um, actually now we're here before going back to Anayama let's uh, do the whole kite thing because now we've got the puppeteer ninjutsu that we should have equipped us here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the puppeteer ninjutsu on this guy so ninjutsu is uh, you want to get a death blow and then you want to quickly press the R1 button again so this time in Puppeteer, we kind of just make make them our, our ally. And this is the guy that took kite, the care of the kite. So this guy is going to fly the kite for us. And since he is, we're going to go up. I don't think we can actually, because the whole point of this is kind of to get the 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 heart or the persimmon or whatever from one of the snakes, which the divine child is looking for to get the uh, return ending. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that yet anyway, because we haven't been to the sunken valley. But I will just show you the path, plus we will get another idol down there. And we will, we will come back and do it properly, don't worry. But I just want to show you what you can do with the kite, I guess. Since you will get a few items, so, you know, it's worth it, I'd say. So let's uh, quickly come through here. Jump up the big tree where the kite was. Or where the kite sh will be now, anyway. There we go, that's the kite. So now we can just jump and we can now grapple across to this platform just here. Snap seeds, now you just want to take a bit of a leap, leap of faith, keep jumping across for the third time and there we are. There we go, pick this item up and now down here we're actually going to have another idol and uh, the guy that gave us the clue. Um, this is the guy that, you know, the guy, the merchant that sold us the, uh, the whole, um, shield back at the old grave and then gave us the clue when he moved here, when we brought everything off of him and now he'll be here. So anyway, um, later on, we're going to come to this area and we're going to be able to stand on here and there'll be a massive snake below us and we are, we will be able to kill the snake. But like I said, we need to go to the Sunken Valley to kind of get the snake to spawn. I'm not sure if we can actually get back now to the uh, idol. Oh yeah, we can. I think we can just do this, I guess. Jump back up here. But yeah, we'll, we'll be taking care of the snake a bit later on. So um, what else can we do? Um, oh yeah, let's go and talk to Anayama. I'm sure I'm probably going to forget something else that we can now do at this point. But uh, if I, th if you guys think of anything, or if I think about doing next episode, we did do everything possible in the Semple Temple area. I'm just not sure if something became available to us. I don't think so though, because we've done Kotaro, uh We've sent the other guy away. We're now doing Anayama. We've done 
doujin or the surgeon all the way until the end except we haven't killed the guys and really i don't think there's anything else we can do i've explained kotaro's quest we've done the divine child up to a point up to the point where we can um we finished tengu's quest yeah I don't, I don't think we're missing anything to be honest i think we're good as far as diving underwater, the only place that we could go back to is the one in the Sheena Castle. But we're going to be going back there anyway, so there's no point. And uh, yeah, next episode we will be going to the Sunken Valley. And uh, hopefully finish in that area. Killing. After next uh, next episode we should be able to kill both snakes to advance the uh, secret end. So, um, right, let's go and talk to these guys now Kotaro will be beside Anayama so talk to Anayama he'll be pleased he'll mention that his uh his items have been upgraded now you can buy quite a decent amount of um upgrade materials uh, let's just see if we can oh no we can't sell anything though I just want to see if we can finally buy the kunai upgrade I'm not sure if we will or not it's 3000 maybe actually there we go. Oh god damn it. That was a bit overkill. Anyway, let's go kick um go and buy that then. And let's just buy some like instead of throwing our money away, let's just uh buy a few upgrade materials now we're here, I guess. Um Yeah, that'll do. Because we haven't really gone and upgraded anything. So at the moment this is basically the end of his side quest is not completely the end once once this area is in flames later on you will be able to kind of come back and whatnot but we won't be able to do that quite yet so let's just for the end of this episode let's see if we can actually upgrade i'm just trying to think this free unique upgrade materials We've got the Ember from Miru Village, and we've just got the Phantom Kunai. The other one, which is Malcontent's Ring, we can't get until pretty much end game. So don't worry about that yet. I'm just making sure that we can do everything in this walkthrough. Right, I'm not sure how much we'll be able to upgrade. I don't think we've got any tools that we didn't fit. No, okay. How much tools do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing two, which would be the... Yeah, okay, we're cool. How can we not? Oh, well, uh, never mind. I guess we went a bit overkill on the um, whole spend in the gold on the upgrade materials. Can we? Do we have more per puzzles? Let's ah, just use it all, I guess. Now we're here. Because if not, I'm going to forget to upgrade. Like I said, it's not something incredibly important, but you know, you may as well go for it. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, we've got the main upgrade materials. There's like three unique ones, and we've got two of the three, and the third one you don't get until incredibly late game anyway. So yeah, guys, uh, we're going to leave this episode here. It's been quite a long one, so hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, if I did happen to miss something, please let me know, and we'll go back and do it. If you do have any questions, just let me know in the uh, comments, and we'll answer them in the next episode. And yeah, guys, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please go like and subscribe. We'll see you next time, guys. If this guide was helpful, please consider joining as a member by using the join button or using the link in the description. This will support the channel, allowing me to get even more games to do, even more video guides. Thanks for the support. Take care, guys.